This is it. Judgment Day. Today, things are going to get settled at last. A lot of things. Uh, uh, what's the big idea? S sorry, Nick. I, I only touched your shoulder. I guess the shock hasn't worn off from my running with the stun gun yesterday. A anyhow, today is the last day of the trial. Good luck, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Maya. Edgeworth is looking glum as always. I hope Von Karma doesn't push him too hard. Whoa! What are you doing? Sorry, I'm sorry. I just thought I'd cheer you up with a pat on the back. Maya, maybe you should go outside and discharge. Right, good idea. Try not to electrocute anyone in your way out. Wow, pal! What's gone into that girl? Detective Gumshoe. Morning, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, good morning. How'd it go, Detective? Have no fear, as promised, I've captured our runaway caretaker. I just brought him in. Took all night, pal. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. You've got to be tired. Tired. Actually, after the shock I got in the way in, I feel pretty good. Yogi says he's forgotten his own name, but that has to be a lie. Why would he want revenge on Edgeworth if he couldn't remember his past? He does remember, and I'm going to prove it. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready. Uh, right, very well. We have reached the final day of our proceedings in this trial. I ask that the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. Come on, don't be odd into silence by every little thing he says. Very well, Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Right. Thanks to Detective Gumchu's efforts, the boat rental shop caretaker has been arrested. In yesterday's trial, the defense asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker has yet to confirm this. I would like to ask the defense to cross-examine him as much as necessary. Very well. Please bring the witness into the courtroom. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness. He lives in the boat rental shop on the lake, from where he witnessed the incident. In addition, he has currently lost memory of his name and identity. Witness! Why did you run away yesterday? The witness was not running away, as he will now testify. I see! Very well, please begin your testimony. Sorry about just leaving yesterday like I did, but I wasn't running away or nothing. I uh, I went to buy some food for Polly, see? I figured I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. I mean, I'd need one of those motive things, right? And I don't got one. So my testimony yesterday stands as is. Hmm, very well. Let's begin the cross-examination, shall we? He has to know his name. Yanni Yogi. You're Yanni Yogi, and I'm going to prove it. I can't talk to him about anything to do with what he did yesterday, because nobody knows. How can you say you had no motive? I say you do. You had a grudge against Edgeworth and the victim, Robert Hand. That's why you took revenge on them, right? Please don't make me repeat myself, Mr. Wright. This witness has no memory of anything beyond several years ago. He can't hold a grudge, it's impossible. I have to prove he's lying about his memory. Otherwise, it's going to be the same thing over and over again till the trial ends. First thing first, I need to prove that this man is who he is. Do that and the motive will prove itself. Oh. 
You've lost much of your memory, is that correct? Uh, yep, seems like it. Then how could you know that you didn't have anything to do with the incident? Uh... Or... Or maybe, you're lying about not having your memory, hmm? You know exactly who you are! The witness has testified quite clearly that he has no memory of who he is. If you claim he's lying, then show the court proof. Ugh. How am I supposed to prove what's going on in that old codger's head? It's impossible. <laughs> I'm glad you've come to your senses, Mr. Wright. Very well, with this, please continue. Might I say something, Mr. Wright? Y yes, Your Honor? You've been saying the same thing now over and over. You've been calling the witness's memory of the past, or lack thereof, into question. But does this really have anything to do with the current case? Of course, Your Honor. The witness has said he has nothing to do with this case and no motive. Both of these statements are lies. Order, order! Mr. Wright, there is a serious problem with your claim. Or are you saying... Are you saying you know who this witness is? Of course, Your Honor. <laughs> now, this is interesting. I would like to know myself, so who is he? Don't play dumb on karma. Mr. Wright, please tell us the witness's name. <coughs> His name is Yanni Yogi. He is a former court bailiff. Yogi? That name seems familiar. Oh! Yanni Yogi from the DL6 incident. I thought the judge would have heard of it. It was such a famous case. But what does this mean? Your Honor, if this man is Mr. Yogi, then he has a clear motive. Jumping to conclusions again, Mr. Wright. This man, this witness, is Yanni Yogi. Fascinating. However, how do you propose to prove this to the court? This is a court of law, as you may recall. You need proof. And allow me to repeat once more that the witness has lost his memory. This is it. I have to do this now. If I can't prove his yogi, right here, right now, then I've got nowhere else to go. Nick! How are you going to prove it? How can you prove that he's Yanni Yogi? It's okay, it's actually quite simple. Your Honor, please take this man's fingerprints. Then, we'll compare them to the fingerprints on file for Yanni Yogi 15 years ago. I see, that makes sense. Huh? I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. Why? The witness has no fingerprints. What? What? No fingerprints? Uh, you see, before I worked as a caretaker, I worked at a chemical plant. I burnt my fingers working with the stuff. Yep. What? Yogi, you sneak! You burned your fingerprints off to hide your past. Hmm, well, if the witness has no fingerprints, I guess we will not be able to prove his identity. No. Well, what will you do, Mr. Wright? Uh... Hmm. It seems that the case has been decided, no? No. I know what happened. I know everything. I... I just can't prove it. But no. I can't let it end like this. I can't lose. There has to be another way. There is no one who can testify as to who this witness is. No one. Nick, what are we going to do? I didn't even consider that he might have erased his fingerprints. What do I do? Well, Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to cross-examine the parrot for a little comic relief, hmm? Yeah, yeah, very funny. You're a sore winner from Karma. Uh... Wait a second. Cross-examine the parrot? What is it, Nick? No, you're not going to... Your Honor? The defense would like to take Mr. Von Karma up on his proposal. Take Mr. Von Karma up? On his proposal? Exactly, Your Honor. I would like to cross-examine the witness's pet parrot. Oh, 
Order, order! Well, what do you think, Mr. Von Karma? Need you even ask? This is a farce. I object. Wait a second. You were the one who suggested I cross-examine the parrot, Von Karma. I have a right to do as you suggested. <laughs> well, if you're so desperate, then please be my guest. Of course, should you go through with this, and nothing comes of it, then I hope you're ready for the consequences. Nick, this is crazy. Well, still want to go through with your little game? Let the parrot take the stand. I will cross-examine her, Your Honor. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. When Karma's rigged every person's testimony, every piece of evidence, except the parrot, she's my last chance. At least, I think so. They live, bring in the parrot. That's quite a bird. Please tell us your name. Name! The witness is ignoring me. It must hurt to be ignored by a bird. <clears throat> Very well, witness. Who is your owner? Please uh, testify for us. Uh, hello? Hello? Squawk? Hmm. Certainly the most concise testimony we've had so far. Very well. Begin your cross-examination. Right. What are you going to do, Nick? I don't know. What do we do, Maya? Hmm. Witness, you can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Maya, you talk to her. Right, um, what do I say? Hmm. Maybe I should get her to say her name. Polly, Polly, what's your name? Polly, Polly, squawk. Mr. Wright, I think we've established this parrot is named Polly. Does this have anything to do with her owner's identity? Actually, it does. Hmm? Huh? <laughs> Fascinating. You claim that the parrot's name will prove her owner's identity. Then show us this proof. Nick! Don't you think you're taking the bluffing a little too far? Listen, we're not here to answer the question of who is the caretaker. We're here to prove that he is Yanni Yogi. All we have to do is tie the name Polly to Yogi. Your Honor, the proof that the parrot's name reveals the caretaker's identity is... The DL6 case file? That's quite a large file you have there. Which page is this proof on, then? Show us or stop wasting our time. Hmm, very well, Mr. Wright. Please show us the page. Where in this file is the information connected to this parrot's name? It's on the suspect data page. Hmm? This page has all the information about Yanni Yogi. Right after he was arrested, his fiance committed suicide, see? Mm, indeed, it does say that, yes. What was his fiancé's name? Polly Jenkins. Polly! Exactly, Your Honor. He remembered the name of his fiancé who committed suicide. That's why he named his parrot after her. I see, I guess it is possible. Bah. A mere coincidence, that's all. My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. Well, Mr. Phoenix Wright, does this make you my granddaughter's fiancé? She's only seven years old. Hmm, indeed. Alone is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. We would need some other corroborating evidence. Where am I gonna find that? Nick, we're getting closer. One more, if we can just get one more piece of evidence. Right, but what? <laughs> you may very well witness, you may continue. Win 
bananas. You can't just say hello anywhere. Where? Maya, you talk to her. Okay, um... Remember, two days ago... Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? Squawk! Don't forget DL6, Squawk! If I can get Polly to say that here, that'll prove that the caretaker had something to do with DL6. Uh, Polly, have we forgotten something? Hello! Hello! Squawk! That's not what you're supposed to say. Forgot something we forgot. Hello? Hello? Squawk? Uh-oh, it's not working, Nick. She won't say it. This is ridiculous. Why won't she say it? Something the matter, Mr. Wright. Wait. Don't tell me Von Conrad expected this. He couldn't have retrained the parrot, could he? Did he train her not to respond when we asked if we'd forgotten something? Let's do this one more time. We have one more option. Maybe I'll get her to say the number of that safe. Huh? The safe? Why? Let's just try to get her to say anything, okay? Polly, what's the number of the safe in the shack? One, two, two, eight. One, two, two, eight. My, what a reckless parrot. Well, Mr. Wright, you aren't claiming that this number has something to do with the caretaker. Actually, it does. That's why I had her say it. Ha! Huh, ridiculous. How can the number to a safe tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your proof. What could possibly link this number to the caretaker's true identity? The DL6 case file. What is this obsession you have with that case? Mr. Wright, where in this file does something related to the safe number? It's on the case summary page. The case summary? Specifically the date on which the DL6 incident occurred. The date of the incident? December 28th? Why, that's today's date, 15 years ago. Actually, today, it was 12 years ago. That's why I wanted to play this game today. And the number on that safe is 1228. Ah! Oh! He used the date of the DL6 incident as the number for his safe, Your Honor. That's how important that date was to him. I see, it certainly is an interesting coincidence. People often do set the secret numbers to dates. Bah! This is not tangible proof. I set my ATM's card's number to 0001 because I'm number one. This has nothing to do with a date. Nothing. That's enough. I think we've reached a conclusion here. This is a mere coincidence, that's all. True, that is a possibility. However, two coincidences at the same time seems more like a pattern to me. What are you saying? Summon the caretaker of the boat shop. Immediately. Witness, tell us your name. Wait, this witness he doesn't remember. No, it's okay. I've accomplished what I wanted to do. I'm done. Nick, he looks totally different! This is the real Yogi, I think. Finally. He's been acting feeble to hide his true identity. Acting for 15 years. Well? Let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. My name is Yanni Yogi. Fifteen years ago, I served as a bailiff in this very court. Order, order! Yanni Yogi, so was it you who killed Robert Hammond and tried to frame Miles Edgeworth for his death? Yes, it was me. I did it. They put me on the witness stand fifteen years ago. Robert Hammond... He said I was mentally unsound. He told me it would make me innocent get me off the hook. So I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really. But he didn't believe me. We won the trial, but I lost everything. I lost my job, my fiancé, my social standing. 
Then, this year, 15 years later, a package arrived. It was a letter and a pistol. The plan was written out in careful detail. It was a plan for me to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. I didn't care who'd sent it. I thought that this was my chance. After 15 years, this was it. Finally, a chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Miles Edgeworth. I have no regrets. Wait a moment! Revenge against Miles Edgeworth? What do you mean? I'm not at liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth yourself? Anyway, I admit it. I was the one who killed Robert Hammond. Vonkama, where is Mr. Yogi? Under arrest, your honor. I saw no room for ever in his confession. Then the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, is... innocent, in this case at least. Hmm. Very well. Will the defendant please take the stand? There are a few mysteries left unsolved. Still, you are cleared of suspicion for this particular case, so I would like to pass judgment on the murder of Mr. Robert Hammond. Any objections? I don't believe it. Why isn't Von Karma saying anything? Very well. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, not guilty. That is all. The court is adjourned. D did someone just say objection? It wasn't from Karma. Wait, but that means... No. Edgeworth? Your Honor, I object to your judgment. What do you mean? I'm not innocent at all. As we have heard, Yanni Yogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge, but revenge for what? Nick! Edgeworth is trying to confess! He's going to say he's guilty! He's going to tell them he was the murderer in the DL6 incident! He's going to tell them he killed his own dad! Uh-oh, what do I do? The judgment has already been passed! I object to Edgeworth's outburst! Didn't something like this happen yesterday, too? I believe a certain witness raised an objection after a guilty verdict was passed. That would be Larry. We must hear this new statement. We must hear Miles Edgeworth. He's right. We have a duty to hear Mr. Edgeworth out. For 15 years, I have had a recurring dream. A nightmare. It's only a nightmare. That's what I told myself. But now I know it wasn't a dream. Yanni Yogi wasn't the killer. You mean in the incident where your father died? From the distance of the shot, it wasn't suicide either. Everything is as clear as day. The murderer. The criminal in the DL6 incident. It was me. Your Honor, I confessed my guilt. I am guilty for DL6, the statute of limitations of which ends today. The culprit is me. Order, order. This is certainly unexpected. The defendant, declared innocent, is confessing to a different crime. A crime for which the statute of limitations runs out today. I'm not really sure how I should deal with this. Bah. It is obvious. We hold a trial right here, right now. We tried this man for his crime 15 years ago. I think, I think I would like to take a five minute recess. During this time, I will consider the appropriate course of action to take. Court is adjourned. I'm sorry, right. I've just wasted all of your effort. Mr. Edgeworth, I just don't believe it, pal. I mean, you kill your dad? I don't want to believe it myself, detective, but it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. Murder is murder no matter what the circumstances. This is crazy! Just crazy! 
Nick, what are you doing? Huh? Oh, I was just reading for the court record once more. I'm getting my case ready. Your case for what? Huh? Isn't it obvious? I'm gonna prove that Miles Edgeworth is innocent. What are you talking about? Polly just admitted to it. He confessed that he did it. In court. I'm sorry, Edgeworth, but I don't believe you're a nightmare. What? It's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here in this court record. In any case, tighten your belts. The real fight is just beginning. I'll prove you're innocent. Trust me. Fight. Then I would like to resume our trial. Judge, Miles Edgeworth has admitted his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then, though pointless, let the defense do their cross-examination. The statute of limitations on the, on the DL6 incident runs out today. Though it's unconventional for me, I would like to run this one by the book. I see. Does the defense have any objections? No, Your Honor. Von Karma, you knew this was going to happen from the very beginning, didn't you? Very well. Will Miles Edgeworth take the stand? Will the witness state his name and profession? Miles Edgeworth, I am a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Edgeworth, 15 years ago, you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? It is correct. Then testify about this matter to court. When Edgeworth was telling me about his dream yesterday, I noticed something. One detail didn't fit. That will be the key. But only if I can get it to work. Please, please... That day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot and a scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. That's all. <laughs> hmm. And until now, you thought this memory was a dream? We were stuck in that elevator for five hours. The oxygen in the elevator ran out and I lost my memory of the events. Bah! The same claim Mr. Yogi has made. Very well. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Destroy you. <laughs> Wait, I've got to actually read this record. Check. Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? Yes, I'm sure of that. I heard the shot and the scream, then everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. I see. But that doesn't make sense. Look at this file one more time. This plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. You do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you? I don't accept this evidence unless you can tell us what page it's on. Which page contradicts Miles Edgeworth's testimony? Can't remember, we're gonna check again. Okay, good. Look at the victim data in this file. It says quite plainly the murder weapon was shot twice. 
Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot, yet the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was the accidental firing when the pistol was thrown. So, who fired the remaining shot? Hmm. Was there perhaps another shooter who fired the second shot? Your Honor, as I'm sure you're aware, this incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. The pistol did fire twice, however, we do not know when that second shot was fired. It might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof that the second shot had anything to do with this incident. What? Um, I see, I see. You do have a point. Mr. Wright, the murder weapon was fired twice as we have heard. One of these shots was fired by the defendant to boy at the time. Do you any proof that the other shot fired had something to do with the case? Court record, court record? Yes! Yes, yes. Your Honor, I think I will be able to show you proof. What? What? Impossible. No, no, Mr. Von Kalmer, shave your surprise until. Shave the surprise. It's, it's... I don't want it challenging my beard, damn it! Save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show us your proof. Do you have evidence that the second firing of the pistol is related to the incident? Look at this photograph. This is a photograph of the scene of the crime, 15 years ago. I can see that the victim lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. This proves that the murder weapon was fired twice at the same time. Fired twice at the time of the incident. This photo proves it. So let me get this straight. This photograph proves two shots were fired. Where? Your Honor, please, please get a clue. Show the judge the contradiction in the photo. As should be obvious, the contradiction is here. I see a bullet hole in the door. Your Honor, Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from the pistol, yet there is also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know that the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone other than Edgeworth fired that second shot. Order, order! Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went into Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after the shot he fired rang out. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by somebody else. M Mr. Wright! But who could that someone else be? The murderer, of course. I knew I should have stepped in before your wild fantasies got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DL6 incident case file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. That's not the file. Look at the file. Hmm. The case summary. That's on page one. Look what is written there. Not a single clue was found on the scene. If the pistol had indeed been fired two times, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He does have a point. That second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. The bullet that claimed Gregory Edgeworth's life was the one fired by his own son. That is the truth of this matter. The whole truth. It was undoubtedly something else that made the bullet hole in the door. Order! I will have order! Mr. Wright has proven one thing to us quite clearly, that the murder weapon was fired twice at the scene of the incident- at the time of the incident. Probably at the scene too. However, as Mr. Von Karma says, the second bullet fired was not found. It is highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked the second bullet. So all we have is the single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to discount the defense's claim. 
I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter, but not his mistakes. That was silly. Ugh. How did this happen? I don't believe that the second bullet doesn't exist. Was I wrong? Have I been wrong about the whole incident? What are you doing, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? I'm sorry, Maya. What? I... It looks like I was wrong. Nick? If the second bullet wasn't there, then all my conjecture is for nothing. No! But you said you'd do it, Nick! You said you'd get Edgeworth declared innocent! I'm sorry. It's just... When I saw the photograph, I thought that two shots had been fired. I was so certain of this, I thought I'd won. I thought there was another person, someone else, who fired the killing shot. But now, I was wrong to think that it could be that simple. This case has stood unsolved for 15 years. Nick... Well, it seems that we have finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. I would like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. Have you been paying attention to the trial so far? Yes, your honor. Do you have any objections? No, no, I do not. So you killed your father, though that was not your intention? Yes, I did. Oh no. He's confessing. Very well. The statute of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today. Therefore, I must pronounce a verdict on the defendant today, right here. Right now. Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. It's just like my first day in court. There are so many things I know I should be saying. But my mind's gone blank. I can't find the words. Mr. Wright? I... 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 Your Honor. I... I object. Mr. Wright, Mr. Wright, on what grounds do you object? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nick? I don't know, his case is perfect. Oh no. Ugh. It must exist. The second bullet. <gasps> what? What did you just say? Nothing. The second bullet must exist. Where? Someone took it. It seems waiting is not going to produce any answers from Mr. Wright. Wait, Your Honor! Hmm? I... The second bullet, it, it exists. What? But we've just had proof that it did not, that it did not exist. I, I realize that, Your Honor. You're really grasping here. It, it's just someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. But who? The murderer! The murderer? Then tell us, just who is this murderer? I'm still thinking about that one. <sighs> so, the criminal took the second bullet. Why would he? Huh? First of all, how would he have found it? It's not easy to find a stray bullet, Mr. Wright. Was there some pressing need for the murderer to search for that bullet? Of course there was a need. That's why he took it. What possible reasoning could he have had? Well, the reason the murderer took the bullet away from the scene with him is... Um, every murderer's question is gonna be wrong. That's really stupid. Um, uh, maybe he thought that the bullet would be used as proof? Proof? It was a special bullet, so he took it with him. If that was the case, then he would have taken the bullet from inside Gregory as well. Huh? Why would he only take one of the two shots fired? Oh, right. Mr. Ride, have you really thought this through? I'm going to have to penalize you. This isn't going so well. Was there some pressing need for the murderer to search for that bullet? Why would the murderer have spent the time to look for a stray bullet? I haven't got a clue. 
What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Um... Bah. The murderer had no reason to take that bullet. You don't want to admit it, but it's true. Ugh. Had to take it. Had to take it. Murder? What's that mean? You're thinking too normal. Think crazy. Don't think why the bullet was taken. Think why the bullet had to be taken. Mr. Wright? Y yes, Your Honor. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, well, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene, but, uh, the murderer had to take the bullet. Had to, Mr. Wright? What do you mean? Well, for instance... For instance what? Uh, maybe the bullet, uh, hit the murderer? The bullet hit the murderer? J just saying, for instance. I mean, if it hit you, you would have to take it with you, wouldn't you? It's not like you could just perform surgery right there. Y you know? Wait a second. I was just talking off the top of my head, but what if that's really what happened? Let me get this straight. So at the time of the murder, the murderer himself was shot. And he left with the second bullet still inside? Thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime? Uh, yeah, I guess that's how it would work. It would work, yes. But there's a problem with that. The other two people rescued from that elevator, Miles Edgeworth and Yanni Yogi, were both unharmed. So that would mean the murderer came from outside, yes. The two men find inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picks up the pistol at his feet and throws it. The pistol discharges and the bullet. The bullet goes through the elevator door and hits the murderer outside. The boy loses consciousness. Then the murderer opens the elevator door and sees the men inside. Hmm. Mr. Wright, you are truly the most unpredictable defense attorney I have ever known. I can tell you're grasping, yet I cannot deny the possibility of what you say. What are you saying? Deny it! Deny it! No one involved with the incident was wounded. There was no murderer. No one was wounded at the time of the incident. He's right. I can't think of anyone. He, Nick! Huh? I just thought of something really crazy. Crazy? Remember what Mr. Grossberg said yesterday? Yeah, his nose whistle. What if Van Karma didn't take that vacation because of shock, but took it because he was injured? Which would mean it could only mean one thing. He was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He was the man who shot Gregory Edgeworth. It was Van Karma! Oh man. Something wrong, Mr. Wright? You seem dazed. Uh, uh, no, Your Honor. Well, you have indicated the possibility that the murderer came from outside. Can you give us the name of your suspect? Uh oh. Should I come out and see it now? Your Honor, there is a suspect. One lone suspect. Well, this is certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who is your suspect? V v My hands are shaking. What? Von Karma! Von Karma? You mean the Von Karma, the prosecutor, sitting right there? Bah. You don't object? <laughs> I see no need. Why honor this ridiculous outburst with my objection? 
because you took a vacation for several months starting the day after the incident, yet you pride yourself on a perfect record. Why would you take such a long vacation without any reason? So you're claiming that I took a vacation to hear my injury from the incident? Fascinating. Prove it. I would have needed surgery, no? Where did I go under the knife at, Mr. Wright? Bring the doctor that operated on me. Have him testify. <laughs> Nick! Let's find out who his doctor is. It's no use. Edgeworth? I know Von Karma. Perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. He probably didn't undergo surgery. That would leave a doctor as a witness. <sighs> Nobody's that perfect. So, so what, Nick? Did Von Karma pull the bullet out by himself? It's insane. No, he couldn't have. You can't just pull bullets out of yourself. Wait. What does that mean? That bullet has to be somewhere, but... Where? Well, Mr. Wright, can you produce evidence to prove that I was shot? <clears throat> Alright, Moncana, I'll prove it. And I'll even use evidence. I know how much you like it. What? The evidence that proves when Karma was shot is... When Karma is perfect, he wouldn't risk surgery, leaving an evidence trail. So then I ask, where is that bullet now? I think it's unlikely that when Karma performed surgery on himself... Y you don't mean... I do. There is the possibility that the bullet is still inside Von Karma. Is that even possible for all of these years? Well, there's one way to find out. We could use this metal detector. Well, well, Von Karma, I'm gonna run this over you and see what we find. I refuse. You refuse? But refusing this means you acknowledge that the bullet is still inside you. Order, order! Your Honor, the defense requests that we be allowed to use this metal detector. Judge, I call for suspension of this trial. This is an invasion of privacy. The statute of limitations runs out in this case today. It was you who said we had to end it right here, right now. <laughs> Enough. I permit the use of the metal detector. Mr. Von Karma, you will submit yourself to testing. Nick, what does this mean? I don't know. But we have to give it a shot. It reacted! Something's inside his shoulder. The bullet. This from Karma. You. It was you. I was afraid this would happen, and so I remained silent. Indeed, there is a bullet in my shoulder. However, it has nothing to do with this incident. What? I was shot in the shoulder long before the DL6 incident. I claim that the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. But, but Mr. Von Karma, can you prove that? Prove? I have no obligation to prove anything. It is you who must prove something here, Mr. Wright. Not I. Mr. Wright? Well, can you prove it? Can you prove that the bullet in Von Karma's shoulder was from DL6? Of course he can't. You don't have any of the DL6 evidence. That's because you took it out of the records room yesterday. With no proof, you cannot convict me of any crime. So sorry, Mr. Wright. No. I'm the one who's sorry, Mrs. Von Karma. What? You are close. One day away from freedom. You see, I have proof! What? 
Who would have thought you had dug who would have dug your own grave trying to convict Edgeworth? I can link that bullet in your shoulder to the DL6 incident. And here's my final proof. My attorney's badge. I am an attorney! I will do this! No. That's... a bullet? Where did you get that? This is the bullet used in the DL6 incident. This was taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. The bullet is preserved quite nicely, with all of the ballistic markings intact. Ballistic markings. You may recall the term. It came up in the first trial two days ago. Ballistic markings are the fingerprints of a weapon. All bullets fired from a gun are marked with that weapon's unique pattern. By examining the markings, you can tell which weapon fired the bullet. It's quite accurate. We have two bullets in our possession. One, the bullet removed from Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other, Mr. Mankarma, is the bullet buried in your shoulder. We could analyze both bullets. Then, if the markings matched, we would know that both bullets had been fired from the same gun. The very same pistol. In other words, the murder weapon that killed Gregory Edgeworth. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, you will let us remove the bullet from your shoulder. Then we'll compare the ballistic markings to those on this bullet. And solve this case once and for all. Well, Mr. Von Karma? Scream. I've heard that scream before. Wait, I know. Get away. Get away from my father. I heard in the elevator 15 years ago. For the karma! It was you who screamed! <laughs> Mr. Von Karma? So it was you. You and your father are my curse! Your father shamed me with a penalty on my record. And you, you left a scar on my shoulder that would never fade. I, I'll bury you. I'll bury you with my bare hands. Death. Death. Mr. Chief Prosecutor, I am sorry. Oh, Karma, it's not like you make this kind of error. I would have thought you would have been able to catch you. I was careless. I'm sorry that you'll have to be penalized. I've covered for you in the past, but not this time. A trap. It was a shock like none I had ever known. Me penalized. It took hours for me to regain my composure. Suddenly, I found myself in the darkness. I was in the court record room. I must have wandered in there without thinking where I was going. The room was pitch black. The lights must have gone out. I went out into the hall and felt my way to the elevator. I pressed the button and nothing happened. Then there was a noise. I was in pain. A horrible burning pain in my shoulder. Just then, the lights came back on. The elevator door opened before my eyes. I saw three people inside, all lying unconscious from oxygen deprivation. Much to my surprise, a pistol lay at my feet. I knew that. It was destiny. In his last moments, Gregory Edgeworth was still unconscious. 
He died never knowing who had shot him. Later he spoke from a medium, blaming Mr. Yoki. He was fooled. It was the perfect crime. Who would have thought another man would have come to open that elevator door? Judge! What? What are you doing? Do your job! Bring an end to this miserable charade. Now, end it! Very well. It appears that we have come a very long way to the end of this maze. Fifteen years later, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. You were innocent. You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, Your Honor. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, not guilty. I'm going to have to pick this out of my hair, aren't I? That is all. The court is adjourned. Nick! We did it! Did you see his face? Von Karma looked even paler than usual. He's pretending to be all cold, but inside you crushed him, Nick. Crushed! I gotta say, I'm impressed. <laughs> it was pretty close, though. I was sure we'd had it. I know. I was on the verge of tears the whole time myself. But now it's all just a good memory. So. It's finally over, Edgeworth. Right. Yeah? I... I'm, I'm not sure how to say this. I know! I know! Try... Thank you. I, I see. Thank you. Right. Y you're welcome. I think you could have done a better job than that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not good at this sort of thing. You've got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. Dear, dear. Woo! Amazing, pal! You pulled through just like I thought you would. I'll never forget this. I owe you one, pal. And tonight, let's party! Dinner's on me! Yeah, my salary went down a bit this month. But who cares? See, Mr. Edgeworth? You should take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. That's how you say thank you. Hmm, I see. <clears throat> Whoop! I, I feel foolish. Don't worry. Take it a little at a time. He'll get used to it. It's been 15 years since I've seen Edgeworth this... unguarded. Hey, y'all! Lana! Y'all were great in there. Thank you. Y'all, Edgeworth, congrats! Uh, thank y'all very much. I knew you were innocent from the start, of course. Just look at you! You wouldn't stick your hand in the cookie jar even if no one was there! You were the witness on the first day of the trial, weren't you? Yeah, well, let bygones be bygones, eh? Speaking of which, what are you doing now, Lotta? Oh, me? Ah, oh, I went back to college. I gave up trying to be an investigative photographer pretty quick. Really? That's too bad. Huh? Isn't that the hot dog guy from the park? Huh? It's over, Nick! My life is over! Why the sad face, Larry? What happened now? Oh, Nick, I'm, I'm not long for this world. You don't look sick. It's Beyonce! She, she's... I'm gonna live in Paris. Paris, Nick! She's leaving me behind! Larry, Larry. Yo, Edgy! There you are! Um, yes, here I am. Congrats, Edgy! Here, little gift for me in celebration. Celebration? That's unusual for you. Harry Butts! You come along tonight, too! My treat, pal! Oh, oh, uh, thanks! Looking forward to it! Yo, yo, Nick! That's the suit that questioned me! When he said treat, that's not please talk for prison food, right? Right? I think you'll be fine, Larry. Right. Yeah, what's up? That envelope that Larry gave me, it's got money in it. Well, yeah, that's not that strange. People give money away to celebrate sometimes. 
It's $38, right? Oh, well, we have that. I mean, it's not a little, but it's not a lot either. $38 is... $38 exactly? Nick! Wasn't that exactly the amount of lunch money that was stolen from Mr. Edgeworth in school? $38. No. No! Larry! It was you! What are you so surprised about, Ride? Huh? Larry was absent that day from school, right? But that doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. What? Think back to that day 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was bored and he came into school anyway. Then he saw the money lying there and the rest is history. I never was good at history. <laughs> Edgeworth. You didn't know, did you? I suspected. I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you like he did that day. Everyone else was saying you did it. The whole class was against you, remember? Yeah, too well. Right, you may not know this, but we used to have a saying back in school. When something smells, it's usually the butts. I know, I know. Really, right, I'm surprised you didn't figure it out. Well, this is sure an unexpected turn of events, huh? Edgeworth. You should have told me! Now, now, Nick, it was 15 years ago. Don't you think the statute of limitations has run out, Mr. Edgeworth? I'd say so, yes. There you have it! <laughs> Where does that leave me? I became a defense attorney because of what you two did! Well, I'd call you a goody two-shoes to the extreme. Yeah, and you get worked up too easily, too. D the death sentence for both of you! But if only I'd known I'd become a prosecutor! The same goes for me, only the other way around. For the longest time, I thought that I might have killed my own father. I thought I might be a criminal. I became a prosecutor in part to punish myself. If I had known the truth, I might have become a defense attorney after all. That's rough. Want to switch, right? Hey, y'all! Line up, I'll take a photo! Hey, photo time! Let's go! And after that, dinner on me! Detective Gumshoe took us out on town that night. We celebrated Edgeworth's newfound freedom. Although, Edgeworth was still in detention. <laughs> oh, I went a little bored yesterday. I had hearts. Still only 5 a.m. Maybe I should go back to sleep. Huh? What's this? A letter? Good morning, Nick. You were really impressive yesterday. Seeing you, it made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium, in training, of course. I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth, too. I wanted to help you. I couldn't. I was useless. So, I've decided to go back to my training. I'll become a full-fledged spirit medium, for starters. I couldn't say it to your face, so I left this letter. Goodbye, Nick. G goodbye What time is it? The first train for the mountains have already left! To the station! I guess I'm too late. Hey! Nick! Maya! So... You're leaving? Yeah. It's hard being a spirit medium who can't talk to spirits. And... I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. Be good, okay? Wait! What? I never could have saved Edgeworth without your help. Huh? On the last day of the trial, I heard her. I heard Mia's voice. You heard my sister? Yeah. Only her voice, but still. It was at the very end when I thought we'd lost everything. Well, that's my sister for you. Detective Gumshoe helped, and Mr. Grossberg, and even Larry. The only one who couldn't help 
was useless, Nick. But you were the one who stopped Von Karma, Maya. Huh? I didn't do anything! All I did was wander around in a daze. Sorry, but I have evidence that you helped. Evidence? I still thought everything on me. A bullet? Von Karma was convinced he had taken all of the evidence pertaining to DL6. But you were the one who rescued the last bit of evidence we needed. This was the bullet that put an end to Von Karma. And you were the one who gave it to me. Nick. Thank you, Maya. I really couldn't have done it without you. I'll be back soon. Huh? I'm gonna complete my training and come back. Okay. I'll be waiting. Of course you will. You can't run the office by yourself. You're hopeless. Uh, I don't know about that. So, bye. Bye. Thank you, Nick. And so, my story ends. Time to turn a new page and say goodbye to the novice defense attorney that I once was. Now, a new story begins. With the same old crazy cast of characters. Ha! Huh. Don't think you've graduated yet, amateur! Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to rethink that claim? I uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh oh, I get a bad feeling about this. Hey, pal! Mr. Edgeworth came down to the precinct to wish me a Happy New Year! Talk about a pleasant surprise! Woo! Detective Gumshoe! Then he hung his head low and went right back outside. Kinda like he was embarrassed or something. Strange, huh? Me? I've been working at a cheese shop. <laughs> that Missy's a nice lady, but she's not exactly what you call a cheap date. Uh-oh, she's in Hawaii right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh? Right? Yeah, I remember him. I hear he's been busy lately. You know, not to ring my own bell, but I sort of taught him everything he knows. I'm sure he's grateful. <laughs> Phoenix Wright? Hmm. Ah, the defense attorney for whom I wrote the defidifit for, yes. Oh, you should know. I've taken over management of the Gatewater Hotel recently. Should you be in the area, please stop by. I can't remember his voice, I'm sorry. Yep, we're on Ace Attorney credits here. I'm having a fancy montage, and that is... Should you say it's credits? It's the end, right? <coughs> oh, it's you. Phoenix Ride? Ah, uh, yes, Mir's understudy, was he not? I wonder how he's doing. I haven't seen him as of late. Of my youth, like the scent of fresh lemons, you see. Phoenix Wright? He an actor? Well, I'm not buying it. You can't be a star of a name like Phoenix. Did you know that they're finally putting some of Hammer's movies out on DVD and those box set things? Nothing I know what the DVD is or Phoenix. Just trying to keep it all straight. I can I can do that, I'm sorry. I don't think I can do that half speed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pleased to announce the pig princess is a hit. I sure owe that Mr. Wright a great deal. 
Oh, and I'm keeping my face out of the public eye until the show's over. I wouldn't want to ruin any kids' dreams, you know? I'm just sitting here really bored and waiting for somebody to come upstairs and say that, Guys, dinner ready? Oh, I got a letter from Maya the other day. It sounds like she caught a cold standing under a waterfall. I wanted to visit but didn't have time, so I sent her some Pink Princess trading cards. She said she can't buy them where she is. What kind of place is she living at anyway? If I did the next game, you'll know. It's undubbable. She's living in a place that's completely undubbable. <laughs> right? Who's that? You wanna talk? Let's talk Pink Princess! Alright! But, you know, I snuck into the studio the other day. And I saw her. The one inside the pink princess suit. Ugh, what a dog. It's kind of a shock for a boy my tender age. You haven't been going forever, buddy. Roughly. Yeah, I remember, right? That lawyer guy. Huh, me? I've been trained to become a paranormal photographer. You know that picture I took of everyone? Well, just behind him, there's a ghost. For real. Now that's telling. I'm gonna be famous. There's a lovely picture coming up, isn't there? There it is. See? <laughs> I really love this picture. Capcom, from back when they didn't misspell the Hold it! Wait, what? Yeah, um... This is the DS remake of Ace Attorney 1. Which means... That we're on the additional case. So, Maya's gone home. Edgeworth's arc is entirely over. What on earth could happen next? Well, we've got to do something that doesn't interrupt the sequel too hard. So, we're going to introduce a bunch of new characters. And in fact, a couple of them might even become important somewhere later along the line, like in Ace Attorney 4, or in Ace Attorney Investigations. Phoenix Wright isn't called a phoenix. For no reason. So, um, my name's Double Cross. That was Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. And the next thing we'll do is episode 5 Rise from the Ashes, also known as Yomi Gairu Gyakuten Turnabout Revival. So, yeah, thank you for your time.